I have trouble relating to people who faint at the hint of a bad smell. A meep or glibber doesn't cut it with me. I love meeps and glibbers, don't get me wrong, but I go looking for what made them. That's the main difference between my stories and HPLs. My guys fight back. Also, they like to have a laugh along the way. Brian Lumley on Cosmic Horror. Hi, hello, and welcome again, everybody, to another episode of Natural Juan. This time around, we're going to be discussing English author Brian Lumley and his works such as the Necroscope Saga and the Titus Crow series. However, before all that, I'd like to tell Jared Roy Lim that, yep, this is the book-related video that you asked for, so I hope that you like it. Also, I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporter, Jonathan Green. Thanks a lot for the help. Anyway, before I go on, may I invite you all to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications if you would like to see more content like this. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started, shall we? Brian Lumley is, as mentioned, a writer from England, born in December 2, 1937 in County Durham. He is noted for having joined the British Army Military Police but then went on to become an author after retirement. In one interview, he was asked what he thought of H.P. Lovecraft's works and said his line which is quoted at the start of this video. To sum it up better, Brian Lumley wanted the same kind of powerful monsters and overwhelming horror that could be found in Lovecraft's writings, but he also wanted wanted his heroes to be the brave sorts who, while they knew the danger well enough, were willing to face them anyway. I must say that Lumley's books were some of the works that really inspired me to write back in the day after I first read Necroscope, The Lost Years, and a little bit of The Burrowers Beneath. So, first up in our lineup of Mr. Lumley's work is the Titus Crow series. Included in the series of books are The Burrowers Beneath, The Transition of Titus Crow, The Clock of Dreams, Spawn of the Winds, Moons of Borea, Elysia, and the Compliant Crow, which are a collection of short stories revolving around the titular character Titus Crow. The series takes place in the Cthulhu mythos, meaning that yes, the massive and godlike monsters like Cthulhu, Haster, and yogg Sothoth are in it, but at least in the book proper, have a twist. See, this isn't your typical cosmic horror story where your heroes struggle with the overwhelming forces of evil. This is where it turns out that the forces of evil also have counterparts among the forces of good, and that victory is possible even against colossal odds if one is willing to fight for it. Titus Crow himself, the hero of the series, is best described as some sort of adventure archaeologist. He comes upon a mysterious device that resembles a box or coffin with a clock marked with strange symbols. He soon learns how to use this clock and soon realizes that it is some sort of space-time traveling device. He soon finds finds himself confronting the many monsters of the Cthulhu mythos including Cthulhu himself and his close relatives Haster, the King in Yellow, and Ithaqua, the Windwalker. Brian Lumley even adds his own god monsters to H.P. Lovecraft's pantheon, which includes Shudamel and the Cthonians, whom the burrowers beneath is actually about, and Cthulhu, Cthulhu's very own daughter. That said, what really set the series apart from other works set in the Cthulhu mythos is the introduction of other otherwise benevolent deities that are the same species as the villains. This includes Cthanid, who is actually Cthulhu's good twin brother and is the latter's polar opposite, and Yad Thadag, a benign version of Yog sothoth While the series is named after Titus Crow, I must note that he is not always the protagonist of all his books. In fact, after the first two books, he is soon replaced by Henry de Marigny, who takes up the fight against Cthulhu and his brethren. To be honest, Honest, after I got into the series, I was somewhat surprised that Crow's sidekick, who was in many ways the Watson to Titus's Holmes, eventually got the spotlight of becoming a hero in his own right. All in all, the series was both a quirky and fun read, even if Lumley's style of writing is a bit antiquated. The best way I can describe it to people who are about to start on the series is that it's like Doctor Who from the TV series meets Cthulhu, and somehow, Doctor Who wins the day and humanity gets a happy ending. Next up is the Necroscope series which centers on Harry Keogh, a man who has the power to communicate with the dead and is the titular Necroscope of the series. There are five main books in the series although it has both interquels and sequels of sorts later on. The five main books are Necroscope, Vampire, The Source, Dead Speak, and Dead Spawn. 
Unlike the Titus Crow series, this is somewhat darker even if it isn't part of the Cthulhu mythos. Necroscope takes place in the 1970s at the height of the Cold War between NATO and the USSR. However, there are also vampires in the background and they might just make things even worse for everybody if not addressed immediately. So I said vampire. I guess you're already thinking, handsome young men who sparkle in sunlight. Well, that can't be further from the case and that is exactly what I like about this book series. The vampires of Necroscope are more monstrous than the average vampire found in media today, being biological horrors that harbor a strange alien parasite in their bodies. It's not made clear what the parasites are to be exact, but they are definitely a plague to mankind if not exterminated. One thing that separates Necroscope's vampires from those of other media is that they are able to change shape easily and can even force others to change shape in truly horrific ways. Some examples of this include flyers, which are mindless creatures designed as aerial mounts for vampires and warriors, which are large brutes reminiscent of Warhammer's Chaos Warriors. Vampires in this series are without doubt the epitome of evil and their appearances reflect exactly that. That said, they are capable of changing shape to disguise their more monstrous natures, but this easily falls away once engaged in battle. Even werewolves, which today are considered separate creatures from vampires, are actually just another kind of vampire. The only difference between them is that their parasites come from wolves. Harry Keo himself is quite the hero, but unlike Titus Crow, the odds are really stacked against him. That said, he does have a great many allies amongst the dead whom he can freely communicate with telepathically. In fact, on many occasions, the dead even rise up from their graves to defend him and are even fully capable of performing the correct rites to put down vampires for good. Later on, with the help of brilliant mathematicians who have also long been dead, Harry Keo gains the power to travel instantaneously from one place to another. However, this does little to help him as the vampire set in motion plots to pit his own allies against him. One of the things that really struck me about the Necroscope series is how focused it is on the Cold War that was happening at the time. I would say that this story turns out to be more like spies versus vampires, which is something I'd like to see more of to be honest. I mean, as a matter of personal opinion, I'm more than a little tired of teen lust and vampires and would prefer to read about something new. Perhaps maybe a mix of terrorists and vampires for a change. Oh well, that's just my personal opinion and I've gone off topic again. In any case, Brian Lumley has gone on to write even more impressive works such as the Psychomech Trilogy, wherein a man gains psychic powers through a machine. There's also the Vampire World series that is a sequel of sorts to Necroscope but centers on a new group of heroes. When it comes to his writing, while Brian Lumley usually writes in a more modern format, I can't help but notice his constant use of exclamation points throughout his works. It makes readers wonder if his characters get excited or panicked all that easily. Well guys, that's it for this episode of Natural Juan, and a brief look through the major works of Brian Lumley, some of the first few books I've read as a child. Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications. Also, Jared, if you're listening to this, don't stay out too late at night especially with women you don't know. Who knows, they might just be... Vampires! Just kidding! See everyone in the next video!